fellow witchlings, welcome back to my channel. It is me, your local chaotic witch hot, trying to stay in frame and in focus. Today we have Benji with us. He's over here. Hi Benji, hi. Good boy. Good boy. Today's video is 10 things you can do for the winter solstice. Uh, I love the winter holidays, all right? I am a little witchy for the winter holidays because for me, I celebrate both the winter solstice and Christmas, not because I'm a Christian, but because Christmas in my family has always been about family, caring for each other. I love giving people things and getting things for people. I love Advent. Um, and I love the epiphany, which takes place after Christmas, between Christmas and New Year's, and then I also celebrate New Year's. So that's like two to three weeks of fucking fun, right? So here are a few things that I love to do around the winter holidays, on the winter solstice, or on the epiphany, and things you can do as well. Number one, you can do some wintry crafts. I love wintry crafts. I did a whole witchy crafts video last year. Um, didn't get a lot of views, but that's okay. I made one of those oranges with little cloves in it and got into an argument with my parents that it, that was actually a witchy thing, um, or it could be a witchy thing. And they were like, no, it's just something everyone does. And I'm like, but that's basically the definition of folk magic. Last year, I also made like a cinnamon broom charm, which my mother hated because she hates cinnamon brooms. She hates them so much. Um, there is no cinnamon broom this year. The winter solstice is a great time to reset manifestations. This is another thing you can do, this is number two. Resetting goals going into the new year because you're hitting the darkest day of the year. When you're looking at kind of the summer solstice, you're hitting that peak energy of it's the longest day, there's so much to get done. So doing spells is great for the summer solstice. For the winter solstice, I love to take tally of goals for the upcoming new year. Sometimes I'll do spells that actually time them to come to full fruition by the summer solstice. Taking advantage of the day's lengthening is an amazing thing you can do. This could look like really just writing down resolutions, goals, manifestations, and kind of revisiting them at the equinoxes or at specific dates between the winter and the summer solstice that you find important. For me, I am gonna be doing a growth spell for my social media pages, specifically YouTube and Instagram, because Instagram has been a fucking mess recently. Instagram's on my shit list this year. But I'll be doing a growth spell and I will be timing it around the winter solstice to kind of move, I think I'm doing it on the next new moon, which is around December 22nd? When's the day of the winter solstice? December 21st! Ah, so maybe I'll do it on December 21st because that's like right around the new moon. I love when things match up. That's awesome. So you can also take advantage of the fact that the new moon's right there and the new moon is fantastic for banishing, cleansing. A lot of people like to do spring cleaning. I am a winter cleaning person. <laughs> I, winter solstice, Days getting longer, time for me to clean. So this is the third thing you can do. You can just completely reorganize your entire house. You can throw salt down and sweep out all the bad energy for the upcoming new year. You can literally, I don't know what kind of cleaning people like to do. I sweep because vacuums are expensive. So I always throw down a little bit of basil to bring in money. I throw down some oregano to bring in joy. And I throw down some salt to purify and cleanse. You can also do a smoke cleansing with a particular purpose on the winter solstice. Um, I love, especially for the solstice uh, and the winter solstice, I love doing something that's gonna bring something in in return. So maybe a little bit of frankincense resin to purify or hyssop to purify and then add in some bay leaves, some basil if you're looking for money in the new year. You can also add in, what are some other ones? Chamomile is a great herb for bringing in calm, peace, serenity. So really thinking about what do I want going into 2023 and 
kind of setting it up on the winter solstice. And then on the summer solstice, for the summer solstice on that longest day of the year, you can kind of start working on these manifestations and these goals as the days grow shorter, go into your hiber, it's a hibernation time. Everything rests in winter. So kind of beginning to think, maybe doing some housekeeping, um, some hearth magic, hearth, hearth magic. Winter solstice, bringing things in with the longer, with the days getting longer. Summer solstice, paying attention and reflecting to what's around you. Number four, you can make some mulled wine. I love wintry foods, okay? I am a slut for stew. I am a slut for sauce. I am a slut for all of the good winter foods, right? Chili. Oh, I love chili. I did make mulled wine one year and it is how I found out I was allergic to cloves. I haven't made mulled wine since then, but I am going to attempt it this winter solstice. Another thing to bring in abundance, to cleanse things, because I'm getting into kitchen witchery. So kitchen witchery is an amazing thing to do in the winter solstice. Foods to bring in abundance, foods to bring in good things. I'm saying abundance a lot, and I know there's probably like a synonym for it. So I'm just gonna, where's my thesaurus? Oh my God, do I not have the dictionary app on here? I really only use this for the source. Abundance. Profusion, plentifulness, profuseness, copiousness, amplitude, affluence, lavishness, bountifulness, infinity, opulence, exuberance, luxuriance, host, plenitude, cornucopia, riot. Riot? Plenty, a lot, mass, quantities, scores, millions, multitude. So we're gonna continue on talking about kitchen witchery for the winter solstice. Um, a goal of mine as a practitioner and as a spiritual person is to eventually get to the point where I am eating in time with the seasons, <laughs> which is kind of like, I wanna be able to know which vegetables and foods are in season for spring, summer, fall, winter, and cook accordingly. This is something that, is not very accessible for me right now, only because I eat what I eat. And it's also gonna be kind of like a long-term project. Maybe that'll be one of my goals for the winter solstice, get better about eating with the seasons. This is something that I wanna do to not only repair my relationship with food, because not only do I, am I chronically ill, and a lot of times food makes me sick, um, but to connect with my ancestors, who most definitely did this because there was no other choice. So, moving on. Winter recipes for warmth, abundance, etc. I talked a little about chili, stew, um, a lot of really hearty foods, and a lot of vegetables that are in season for the winter. That could be a winter solstice thing. If you want me to make videos about my journey with food in that way, or talk more about it, let me know. Here's another one. Uh, spending time with your family and your found family and giving them gifts. This is kind of a typical one that was very much associated with Christmas for me, but I really love making magic gifts for my family and giving it to them as part of the solstice slash Christmas. Um, because for me, those two days are really close together. So sometimes I celebrate them together depending on my energy. Um, in this time period. I am making an enchanted plant hanger for my sister. <laughs> and I'm also making blessed St. Francis medals for my pets and my family's pets. So I need to buy, I have two, I need to buy four more St. Francis medals <laughs> to make these. And for me, I love doing that. I love giving things to people. And the reason I say family or found family is that not everyone wants, not everyone may be in a position to give witchy gifts to their family, not anyone. Some people may not even like their family or be on talking terms with their family. So if you have a found family, if you have a partner, if you have friends, this is something you can do with them. You could also do like a little uh, gift exchange. For me, I have always associated with the winter holidays in general with... Benji! you can't bark at whatever's outside. Yeah, it's all white. I want more intense and he's laying on me. 
two hours later. Are you going to get off now? Stop licking me. I have to work. Mommy has to work. Can you go lay down? Can you go lay down for me? Can you go lay down? There he comes. Yeah. Good boy, Benji. All right. I've always associated the winter holidays with giving. That may be, you know, part of being raised in a family where Christmas is really big and Christmas Eve is really big. Um, but I also think it's something that you can do for the winter solstice as well, even if you don't celebrate Christmas. Another one I have listed is practicing familial folk magic. Now for me, what I mean by this is learning about the kind of superstitions and beliefs that your family um, has about the new year. Uh, for example, in Italian folk magic and Italian American folk magic, there are families who eat lentils to bring in good luck in the new year, which sucks because I haven't been able to find gluten free lentils. And I really just want lentil soup. Another amazing winter meal. And so you eat a spoonful of lentils, or you eat them as like a New Year's Eve dinner to ward off the evil eye, bring in good luck, bring in plentitudes for the new year. I think that's a Sora's definition for abundance. So I'm gonna attempt to find some lentils so I can take part in this tradition. The other one, this is these are more specific for the epiphany until we get to number 10. Number 10 is a ritual. If you are not interested in the epiphany, you can skip ahead and you can go to the fire ritual. But if you like me are a folk practitioner, maybe a folk Catholic practitioner, or have elements of folk Catholicism in your practice, um, this is for you. So for the epiphany, I love doing novenas. And for me, someone did ask me to talk about novenas a little bit more. So I'm probably going to do a video, but I will talk a little more here. Depending on which tradition you come from, which culture, which folk magic, we have different definitions for novenas. Um, for me, a novena means a nine day prayer. That is just baseline, you do the prayer for nine days. I know other people, specifically I had this conversation with J. Allen Cross, author of American Buddhaharia and The Witch's Guide to the Paranormal. Love him, buy his books. Um, where a novena is a nine day spell candle. So de it, depending on the tradition and the culture, when you say novena, it's gonna mean something different. So for me, when I say novena, I almost always mean a nine day prayer to a specific saint, to um, an archangel, etc. Other people will say novena and they mean a nine day spell. For me, when I do my novenas, my novena prayers, my nine days, I can do a spell to match up with it. I will like get a seven day candle prepped and I will burn it and pray every day that it burns. Um, so I like correlating my spell candles with my novena prayers. But for me, when I say novena, I always just mean the prayer. I like doing, I think the epiphany is I don't know how long it is, hold on. Feast, okay, it's celebrated the 12th day after Christmas, January 6th. So it goes to January 6th from Christmas. So there are 12 days prayer. Yeah. You could do a novena prayer, but I'd probably do 12 days of prayer <laughs> to what I need. And for this, I would set it up for something similar that I would do with a spell with the winter solstice, which is what do I want to bring in the new year? Who, who do I want to petition to help me achieve these goals? Um, I may do this in tandem with a spell candle for the new year, or I may do the novena by itself. The other thing you can do is you can do a three kings house purification from Sister Carol's book of spells and folk magic. And I love this book. This is what I did last year. This year I have to actually modify it a little bit because it calls for holy water and I don't have any. And everyone keeps telling me just go to church and take some holy water and I am nervous to do that. And the only one nearby is St. Joseph and I don't want to take Joseph's holy water because I already feel like he doesn't like me that much. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Folk pro shit folk practitioners say. I don't think St. Joseph likes me very much, so I can't take his water. I love this book and I love this three, thing, three Kings House Blessing. It's great for the day of the epiphany. Um, that purification spell is simultaneously like a cleansing and purifying and blessing the home. You can also do it when you move into a new home. I like doing it on the epiphany because I find that I like, you know, lining things up with holidays. You know what I mean? The, now we're back to, I guess it's witchy. This is kind of witchy crafts, 
But I've seen a lot of people be like, you can make a, an evergreen wreath, wreath or a Yule log. I was gonna make a Yule log last year, but I couldn't find a log to put my candles on top of. And we went to Home Depot and I looked at firewood and said, I think this is a good thing for a Yule log. And my boyfriend looked at me like I had said, I'm gonna murder a small child. He said, what? That's firewood. I go, yeah. He's like, and you wanna light candles on top of it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, no, no. Mm -mm. So I never found a rock, I mean, a, a log for a Yule log. So I just didn't do it. I may try to make a wreath. I think people make them, I don't know. I've never made a wreath. So I do not know if they're like homemade or store-bought. If you don't have homemade evergreen, store-bought is fine. I don't, I, I mean, I like making things in this season and like I'm a crafty crafty little witch. Hashtag witchcraft. I like making things so maybe I'll attempt to make a wreath but I honestly don't know if I have the energy or the money. So I may just buy one. Buy an evergreen wreath. Hang it on the front door. Or I'll make something else to put on my front door because front doors are like, I feel like they need some good protective energy. Oh this is the fire ritual. So I have done this before. I think I've done it in the summer solstice, but the fire ritual is specifically to let go of any pains or harms or anything you just kind of want to get rid of for the new year. And this can be done in a little cauldron, in a big fireplace, or inside. Please be mindful of fire safety. Please. Please. And how I do this is I will make a fire and I will write things down that I want to let go of coming into the new year and I'll burn them. And this is a ritual that doesn't necessarily have to be done on the winter solstice, but I really like to do it on the winter solstice. While you're burning these pieces of paper with things you want to let go of, you can add some herbs uh, similar to the kind of smoke cleansing to purify and then bring something in. If you want, you can also, after doing this, like letting go of things and burning them, you can burn pieces of paper with what you want to bring it in. So it's like letting go while also putting intention out into the universe. Th this is just kind of a very basic ritual that I like to do around winter solstice time. It's not super crazy. It's not super complicated. What you need, really, all you need is pen, a piece of paper, and a way to safely make fire. This could be a lighter and a piece of paper. And just make sure you have like a little ash tray. This could be in a cauldron. This could be in a fireplace. This could, it, their options are endless and that's why I wanted to include it because it really is something that is accessible for a lot of people. If you have difficulty with fire, you can also just kind of crumple it up and throw it out. But I prefer the fire method. Fire is very purifying. And that is, that is all my, that is everything on my list. I love a good 10, 10 things list. Um, let me know what your plans are for the winter solstice. Let me know if you, like me, also continue to celebrate Christmas because that's just kind of something your family does. Yeah, and thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. If you want, you can like, comment, subscribe, and turn the bell on, but absolutely no pressure. Remember to drink water. See you at the Benedicti.